Uh, thanks, Kuldeep, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Abhishek, and I am here with my colleague Savan. Uh, we are from Craig, and we are excited to uh, talk about our journey of building a scalable domain agnostic order management system using uh, open search. Uh, so uh, uh, before we even go to the problem statement, right, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, CRED. So uh, just a show of hands, uh, how many of you are on CRED or have used the CRED app? OK, quite a few of you are. Right? So uh, our, mission, uh, our mission is to uh, enable financial progress for our members. Now, to become a CRED member, you need to have a certain credit score. But once you become a member, you get access to plenty of offerings. For example, we help you to make your uh, credit card and utility bill payments on time. Uh, you can uh, track and uh, renew your insurance policy. You can make UPI payments. You can uh, purchase a premium D2C products or even uh, uh, book uh, uh, luxurious travel stays on uh, credit, right? Now, uh, talking about the scale, uh, last year, over one third of credit card bill payments in India uh, happened through credit. Uh, this amounted to a total TPV of around 1.4 lakh crores. On a daily basis, we fulfill and process around 2 million orders and around 6 million uh, payment transactions. Uh, now, uh, coming to the uh, topic of order management, right? So first, let's understand what is order management and what it means for us, right? Uh, so the journey starts right from capturing the user's intent to initiating the payment, uh, uh, processing the payment, and once the payment completes, then initiating the fulfillment journey, right? Uh, there could be other flows, uh, for example, cancellation flows or uh, other, other post-order flows like uh, order history or customer support, et cetera, right? So all these have to be supported and powered through a robust order management system. Right? Now, uh, talking in terms of what were the challenges that we faced uh, as, as, as CRED right? uh, in, sort of in, in building a, a robust order management system, uh, it actually boiled down to three uh, challenges. The first one, as, as you would have noticed, right? uh, so we have variety of offerings. And different business domains, they come with different order lifecycle and different fulfillment workflows. For example, uh, in case of an e-commerce order, right, it could be we initiating or we intimating the uh, seller first, and then once the seller approves, then there is a physical delivery of the good that happens, right? But in case of a credit card bill payment, it could be a very different fulfillment workflow, which happens completely online by talking to a different set of providers, right? Uh, the second uh, problem statement that we faced was, now these different offerings also have requirements for different information or different data that they need to capture. For example, in case of a credit card bill payment, we need to capture what is the credit card against which you are making a bill uh, or you are making a payment, right? Uh, but in case of an e-commerce order, it could be the SKU ID or the product ID that different teams may want to capture, right? So this was the second problem statement. And the third problem statement was to power different product flows, again, depending on the data that they have ca captured, right? This custom data that we talked about. Now, so this ultimately boiled down to the problem statement of how do we build a domain agnostic order management system, right? Now, uh, quickly summarizing uh, our approach to solving this problem and some of the key design uh, decisions that we took was, uh, so the first uh, uh, design choice that we took was to enable our clients to define custom fulfillment state machines. So if I were to uh, explain you this with an example, so if you go to any order history detail on CRED, right, so you would basically see two legs. So one is the payment leg, and then there is the fulfillment leg, right? The payment leg uh, is defined by the payment state machine, which is uh, handled by the platform itself, the OMS and the checkout platform. But then the second part, which is the fulfillment part of it, right, which, and this again varies from uh, different uh, uh, business uh, domains to different business domains, right? So here we empowered our uh, clients to basically come and define their custom order item state machine. So once the payment state machine is completed, then the respective order item state machines could be triggered, right? The second problem was solved by we giving the capability to our clients wherein they can define custom metadata for their, uh, uh, again, uh, different uh, order items that they have, right? Uh, through, a through, uh, uh, through, again, a, a, a metadata schema uh, uh, that they can come and define on our uh, platform. Now, what we do is we store all of this, the custom metadata along with the state machine definition, 
uh, into our primary database, which happens to be MySQL. But now the interesting part comes, right? Now, how do we power those different workflows which depend on this custom metadata, right? And that's where the power of uh, open search comes into picture, right? So what we have in place is a data pipeline which moves data from our primary database, which is MySQL, uh, to DMS, to Kafka, and then uh, through a custom connector service that we have written to open search, right? Now, what we also do is, uh, so we understand what are the different fields on which uh, different clients may need uh, uh, searches or aggregations or et cetera, right? And hence, we define those custom mappers for them, which uh, helps us in defining the right uh, indexes on the open search uh, side. Now, to uh, summarize all of this, right? So what we have at the end uh, is, is our uh, architecture which follows the CQRS pattern, wherein we have a command service uh, which takes all the writes uh, to our primary database, which is MySQL. MySQL. The data flows from MySQL to OpenSearch, and all the reads, all the queries uh, are powered through OpenSearch through a query service uh, that we have written on top of it, right? Uh, and all the interaction that we do with our clients, uh, with different uh, business units, uh, it, it, it happens in an event-driven uh, fashion, wherein we listen to events and we also fire events on any uh, state change, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, now I would like to uh, hand it over to Savan to talk about the open search uh, side of things. Uh, thanks, Abhishek. <laughs> yeah, uh, so basically I'll be talking about uh, how open search uh, is heavily uh, leveraged in the OMS query service. So um, as, as everyone in, uh, here who have used Cred app, uh, there are different uh, line of businesses we have, and open search is heavily leveraged uh, in certain places. For example, uh, to show total due amount for your credit card bill payment, we do aggregations on the open search, or to show all the listings of the e-commerce products uh, which you have bought, we use uh, open search to show the transaction details for a particular transaction which you have done on Cred. Uh, and also to uh, solve certain complicated use cases such as powering the filters which are user specific on the transaction history place. So uh, in all these places, open search uh, is the backbone uh, behind the uh, OMS query service. Uh, if we look at the scale at which open search is uh, working in CRED, specifically in this uh, OMS uh, query service. So we have more than 4 billion uh, searchable documents and uh, greater than 20k indexing rate and 26k uh, search rate per minute. Uh, reaching at this scale was not easy. So we had our own set of uh, challenges and learning. Um, so uh, we had an incident uh, where uh, latency shot when the RPS increased on open search from 5 RPS to 20 RPS. So on doing uh, load testing on open search, uh, we saw that it was not able to scale beyond 50 RPS. So this was when uh, OMS query service was built and open search was just uh, a fresh setup which we had uh, configured without any uh, customization or tweaking. Uh, so uh, this then the journey started on how we can optimize open search uh, so that we'll be able to scale uh, to the standards which CRED required. So this was the initial setup which we had, where we had three master nodes and uh, five data nodes. <coughs> but uh, uh, as you see over here, we were breaching on most of the AWS best recommended practices. So we were breaching on the number of indexes, number of shards, uh, based on the setup which we had. And the primary issue was around the uh, size of the shards. So we had uh, more than uh, 800 shards which were of KB and MB of sizes. So that was the one of the main issues. So uh, what we did to resolve this was uh, we merged all the smaller indexes and we created an alias on top of it so that we don't have to make application side changes. And uh, the reason for these small shards were obviously because of some of the business uh, onboardings which we had um, as well as some of the backfilling activity which we had done. Uh, the next set of challenges were around the query, the way we were querying. So earlier, all the queries for a particular uh, uh, index type 
was a wildcard search which used to hit all the indexes and all the shards within the indexes. Uh, so we did two things over here. First one was to introduce routing. So as you know, uh, Cred app is very specific to a user, right? So it made sense to have user ID as a routing key. And also most of the, uh, for most of the queries, we started uh, time bounding the query. So you can query only for a specific time range. So with these two optimizations, uh, from hitting all the indexes, all the shards, we started hitting only one index and one shard uh, of that particular index. So this helped us reduce the latency from somewhere around uh, peak uh, P99 400 MS to 35 MS. So this was a small win for us. So along the journey, we had uh, multiple challenges and learnings associated with routing and uh, re-indexing. One of it is, uh, one of the challenges which we frequently have is, like uh, whenever a new business or a product is coming up, uh, there is a requirement of having a mapper updated for a specific field, be it for aggregation use case or be it for search related use case, which requires us to do re-indexing time and again over the existing indexes as well as the new indexes which will come, right? So uh, the challenge was how do we do re-indexing without any downtime or without any complicated logic where we are doing dual writes on two different indexes and then during switch over, how do we manage all those things? So we figured out there is a better way of doing live re-indexing if you want, which is by uh, using update by query. Uh, and we had to go into the internals of uh, open search code base to figure out how routing is handled by update by query and uh, whatever documents which you are re-indexing uh, using update by query, it lands into the same shard uh, to which previously it was mapped to. So this was again one of the learnings which we had. Uh, couple of months back we had, a, uh, we had an issue where we were seeing intermittent latency spikes uh, on the open search cluster. So AWS team helped us uh, during the entire journey. So we did a bunch of optimization right from increasing the IOPS because uh, read uh, IOPS microbusting was breaching the threshold to disabling the snapshots uh, to figuring out why the right thread queues was increasing. Uh, the uh, conclusion for this particular issue was uh, there was a, a high swap usage and uh, AWS team recommended us to move from compute optimized node to memory optimized node and also suggested us to disable the swap. So once we did all those things, um, as you can see, uh, the intermittent latency spikes which we had uh, the issue was resolved and uh, AWS team has also taken up as a feature request to uh, add uh, or enable metrics for swap usage on CloudWatch which are not uh, available today. So yeah, uh, overall uh, through all these optimizations uh, we were able to achieve uh, 1500 RPS uh, at uh, 30 MS of latencies and uh, all these optimizations helped us uh, make sure that the query service is uh, reliable and uh, scalable. Uh, yeah, this this was our journey uh, using open search in OMS service and uh, yeah, feel free to uh, reach out to any one of us uh, to have a chat. Uh, we have Suri and Adesh uh, in the audience who are part of OMS team helped us with all these optimization. Thank you.